And thank you, Jonathan, for that. Um, I think some of you would be surprised that today I am not going to talk about something accounting, but I guess kind of in a way it is. And those of you that know me know I love payables, but so this kind of plays into that. But one thing I am seeing uh, frequently with a lot of our customers, and especially with some recent projects, is that more companies have multiple related entities. Um, it may have been that way for a long time, or maybe in today's challenging supply chain market, you're acquiring um, additional, maybe a supplier, or starting a new company just to try to meet the demands of your main company. So these kind of intercompany relationships, I'm gonna to refer to them as sister companies uh, for the purposes of this discussion. These sister companies might stand alone as completely separate entities. Um, they may be consolidated together for financial reporting aspects, or they may just uh, kind of operate, you know, interdependently. But either way, one company purchases something from the other company at a margin, and more often than not, I'm seeing money's changing hands between those companies. So when we're buying from one sister company, it's necessary to treat that company just like we would any other vendor or supplier. The purchase order is created, it's sent to the vendor, and then the receiving company enters that as a sales order, they ship the product out, and then the product has to go over and be received by the other company. It's a pretty straightforward process. If these sister companies operate independently in different locations with their own staff, and employees, it generally isn't a pain point and it's kind of business as usual. However, these days we're seeing a lot of people fighting with labor shortages. And so we kind of have to try to do more with less these days. Acumatica is starting to ease that paperwork burden for us with this inner company buying and selling, allowing us to buy from another company and sell to them in a margin and it lets that information flow seamlessly between them, which is really nice. The less touch points we have, the better. So let's see how that works today. You see here, I have created a purchase order from uh, one of the companies, which is the products wholesale company. And I have to, excuse me here while I, motion controls, okay. So you'll see there, um, I am going, created a purchase order to one of my other related companies. And I have been able to extend them as a vendor. Um, that's for a different discussion, but Acumatica will automatically know that this becomes an intercompany type of transaction. If I go ahead and I remove this purchase order from hold, and I'll just go ahead and approve it. This one goes into an approval loop. This becomes an open purchase order and now it's approved. I don't have to send this purchase order over to the other company because I'm gonna show you that it automatically kind of sets up into a queue for them on the other side. But one thing I do wanna show here, if I come over on this screen, you're gonna see down here in this intercompany sales area, that there's a related order type and related order number. And at this point we see that's blank. So that's kind of our indication if we're dealing with multiple companies that they have not processed this order yet. I'm gonna switch over to my other company, the, the wholesale company where I can process that sales order. If I come over here to my wholesale company, I can now see in this process for generate intercompany sales orders that I have an order in my queue that came from my retail division. So I don't have to rekey this whole thing. I can just go ahead and select that process. And now I've processed that order and it's over. We've created the sales order. Let's go take a look at that sales order that was generated. Refresh that screen. You can see at the top of my sales order primary list that I have an order type of SI. So this is an intercompany sales order. We specified that with a, a special order type so we can filter those out. 
I can go ahead and drill into this sales order and kind of take a look at this. What's really nice is that it's already even filled in the customer order number as the PO number that it's coming from. I also see here on my shipping tab, the intercompany section is showing me the related order type and the related order purchase order number. And I suppose you might be asking yourself, what if I click on that PO number, can I see it? Well, yes, you can. But there's also some security reasons where that may or may not be possible in, in a certain environment. So if the same person's doing it, it's definitely a possibility. I'm gonna come back here and we're just gonna pretend for the sake of argument that we're gonna go ahead and ship this item. We'll go ahead and create our shipment and just kind of push this through. And I'll go ahead and confirm that shipment. So now we've packaged it up, we've sent it off, we maybe we drop shipped it or we're sending it to our other division where they can go ahead and now they need to receive that, that order. Before we do that, I'm gonna step back over here to purchase order briefly and refresh this screen. And you're gonna see on the purchasing side that we show the related sales order number and the order type. So you, on both sides, we're getting a link back to those original documents. We haven't had to rekey anything and it gives us a lot of information to know, oh yes, it's been accepted, it's been confirmed. I'll switch back over into my retail company. And at this time, if I refresh this screen, in my queue, I see that I have a receipt available. Now there's a checkbox here that says put created receipts on hold. And you guys know me that I hate putting anything on hold if I can help it unless I have to. So I'm just gonna uncheck that box. I can go ahead and I can receive them all, create the receipts all at once or in this case, I'm just gonna do the one. So what this does is that creates that receiving document for us and it's over in our purchase receipts. I'm gonna go over here to my favorites and favorites are great. So just kind of as a side note, um, you'll see we can star things. And if I put a star next to something in any of our workspaces, it puts it in our favorites so that we can easily get to the things we use most often. I'm gonna jump into my purchase receipts and we will see I have a new balanced receipt out here. At that time, we could go ahead and switch the location where we're receiving that into. Um, and what's nice also is that vendor reference number is linking us back to that sales order. Uh, we can now put this, release this and put it into the normal AP process. Acumatic has done a really good job of streamlining this intercompany uh, purchasing and sales process. It reduces data entry time, reduces touch points that can result in errors. And no matter how small the errors, errors are still costly to an organization. What I like about this too, is that you can adopt this whole process as you saw it, or you could take it in pieces. Oh, this works, this one doesn't. So we can kind of break this up. It doesn't have to flow exactly like that. And uh, you don't have to rekey the data. So if there's any questions, please put them in the Q&A. And I will turn this over to Liam O'Hara, where he will take over some of the, my love of accounting.